But what is important for the rest of this talk to understand about them is that they allow us to write code that looks very similar to blocking code, but is not. Okay? Just one new keyword you have to think about for the rest of this talk. And it's yield. So this is an example of doing a non-blocking HTTP client request to something. To Google, in fact. Google slash tbot. And the code looks very blocking. We have what looks like a long-running loop here. We assign to a variable the results of something. But actually, this is an asynchronous process. Client request is an asynchronous thing. And stream read is an asynchronous thing. When PHP sees yield, this function becomes a generator. And you can use generators in interesting ways. Please come to my talk tomorrow to hear how. Because it's event loop based, you have to start the loop off. And this line here makes this a long-running process. So, not that long running because the moment the request is made and this stuff is read out, this will be done and so this can stop. But in other situations, having this as a long running process makes sense. Like if you implement an HTTP server. This is a step away from the code you're used to writing through Apache or Nginx. You're no longer delegating that responsibility of handling and interpreting requests to a third application. You're doing it in code. You're making an HTTP server in code. This is your Nginx, baby. Now, you get a request coming through here and the socket connection that that's on. You can get the body. While it's readable, you can read bits of it. Put that all in like a temporary memory storage stream called the memory sync and make a response. This looks very synchronous, but it's not. And that's awesome because it's simple to reason about. There are other libraries in Icicle and um, similar libraries in React. These are the most interesting ones I want to show, but there are others. Um, there's a full promise implementation in Icicle and React, which is really cool. So if you've written promises in JavaScript, if you've done a lot of JavaScript, or just well-structured JavaScript, promises are a really cool aspect of that. And you'll probably take to this quite quickly. There's a good set of different and useful types of streams provided by Icicle. Uh, there's a non-blocking file I.O. library, which is pretty cool, because now you don't have to wait for long file reads and long file writes, and you can do code that's just generally non-blocking. There's some raw sockets, so you can make a socket server, you can make a socket client, you can use those to communicate between processes and different applications. There is no WebSocket implementation with Icicle so far, but I am told it is coming. So if you need to implement something today, Definitely experiment today. But if you need to implement something production ready today, probably go with React and Ratchet. For now, uh, there's no WebSocket implementation. Icicle, it's coming. Don't worry. And the fifth thing is DNS resolution in an unblocking way. These things are the tools that you would use to make everyday applications. Maybe when you know them better. They're the building blocks for doing serious work that we get paid to do but they're all done in an asynchronous way. They're awesome tools to be able to use to make real-world applications. Time for another story. This one's not as cool as the previous one. So, I mentioned I work at Silverstrap. I work in the open source team, which means I get to be paid to do open source work every day, which is amazing. Sometimes it's directed at making a new module or improving another module for clients we have. But generally, in fact, it's always open source work that I work on. Um, what did I want to do? No, not that. Okay. And we have this module in the CMS called QJobs. If you've used Laravel's Q stuff, it's a similar concept. It just has an interface to it. And the kinds of jobs that you would queue on this are things like re-indexing a solar database or re-indexing your site to submit it to Google uh, Webmaster Tools or publishing posts later. Anything you can think of that you would want to defer till a later time or take out of the request response cycle, you can do through this QJobs module and interface. But it was very unstable. It's very old, the first implementation, and we were asked to make it more stable, to make it better, just generally. We were just actually said, told, take this thing and make it better, which is an awesome thing, by the way, like to have the, to have the ability to rewrite a lot of stuff. Problem was, it wasn't an unqualified make this better statement. We had to make it better in a minor release, okay? And a lot of clients still for LTS reasons and contractual reasons have to run on versions of Linux that don't support 5.4 and onwards. 
Please don't kill me. I didn't make that rule. <laughs> we had to make this a minor patch, which means we can't increase the PHP version. We also can't add anything to the required section of Composer JSON because that's a breaking change. So we can't depend on using extra modules to do this stuff. We had to write with just the tools available in 5.3 and make things more stable. So it was an interesting challenge. And I chose to approach it in three ways, to try and solve three problems at the time. They are, very, very quickly, distributed events, better forking, and easy concurrency. Of the three, I've got solutions for them. Better forking is the only one that's running in production, but it is running in production. So some of the stuff I show you today is running in production sites on Silverstripe, and that's awesome. Like, this is asynchronous code in mainstream. I want to show these with code, with code though. So let me talk about them briefly each, and then I'll show you some code, which hopefully illustrates how easy this stuff can be done. Distributed events. Remember when I did the initial forking code, and I created a child process, and I had to wait till it was done, but I didn't get a lot of feedback, right? I could start the child process with some state, but the only feedback I could get was when it was complete. Not very helpful for debugging, not very well structured, I couldn't do in-progress updates, the communication there was terrible. What I wanted to be able to do was to be able to listen for events where I was creating the child processes and emit them in the child processes for things like progress updates, for errors, for that kind of thing. The library I ended up with is called Remit, and I want to show some code about it. So uh, I'll create a new file, and I'll just call it index. This is the boring part of the code. Okay, index.php. Now, it installs with Composer, so uh, we need to require the Composer autoloader. Okay, and it uses code from a namespace called async.php slash remit. So I'll alias that just so that the code is quicker to type. And there are two parts to this. There's the thing that listens for events to be emitted, and there's the thing that emits them. The thing that listens, I'm going to call a server. New remit. It's so tempting to actually say everything I'm typing. <laughs> Try not to. Remit. Okay. We need um, this uses zero MQ, which remember is a message queue to store state to be able to communicate between different things. We need to point that at a location, and for that I've got a value object called in memory location that has two parameters, 127001 and the port, which are standard places for zero MQ, but you can specify your own thing. So you can specify a different server, different node, whatever. Okay, and to this we can add a listener. I'll just call it foo because all great examples are called foo. Data, and in here we'll do something like print this is on the server. Now because we want to do this to enable reactive code, it makes a lot of sense to tie this into an event loop structure. This doesn't provide an event loop, this doesn't require an event loop, but it's developed in such a way that it can work with one. Failing actually being an event loop, you can say while, um, while true, serve a tick and just sleep for a bit so the machine doesn't explode. Let's run this quickly just to make sure I haven't made any huge mistakes so far, apart from using exec I guess. <laughs> okay. So that doesn't appear to have any errors. Let's just make sure that the event emitting part is working. Emit foo some data. Yeah, okay. We've added a listener. We can emit it from the server. Big whoop, right? But we can take this a step further. We can say client is new remit. This connects to the same place that the server is listening for messages so that it can send it to this particular server. And then the client can also emit. Uh, hmm, 
commit foo some new data. It looks right. But it's not working! Here we go to the backup. Server add listener remote. Okay, while true, server tick. Um, I have no idea. I wrote this code earlier for just such a, for just such an incident. The server code looks like this, remember? You create a new zero queue server, you point it at a location to listen for stuff, you can add some event listens to it, and then you run this. This is a long-running script. If it's attached to an event loop, that makes sense. So this you would use where you spawn child processes. In those child processes, you create a client, point it at the same place, and emit some events on it. So now you can start doing granular feedback from a separate running process to the master process that created it. You can get very good bi-directional communication. Let's uh, see if this works. CD backup, PHP server. <laughs> okay, CD remote. Okay, you see how quickly that runs? There's not nothing. There's nothing very significant running in that. Maybe let's add a sleep in there just so we can see a delay between them. So remote. There we go. Sleep two. Okay, let's run that again. So the server's still running. I'll just show the last bit of data there. Remote. Two and bar. Run again. Two and bar. So this is doing bidirectional communication. From a client process, it's emitting events to a server process. This is a really good problem to be able to solve. Especially if you remember how limited it was with forking, and how if you do Gimman, in an asynchronous way, this is actually what you want. This is the implementation that sustains that kind of beautiful API that Gearman has. Okay, this was the one thing I wanted to solve. The second thing, better forking. Okay, I'm actually just gonna show the examples straight up because I don't wanna have more problems. Oh, not that, this. Okay, so Doorman works with very similar concepts here. Um, very similar concepts to Gearman. You create a manager. Um, in Gearman, it's called the client. You create new tasks and you add them to the client or the manager. And then this stuff should theoretically run in a separate process. This comes with a handy utility class called process callback task, which serializes a function to be run in a separate process. This is a very contentious thing. It's just meant for debugging and for illustrating this point to you. You can create tasks by implementing a task interface, and I'd very much recommend you do that for production, but this is a very good illustration of how this works in practice. And Jeremy wrote this. Jeremy, stand up. The code that powers this, by the way. He didn't write this specific code. Jeremy, where are you gone? Ah, he's gone. Okay. Jeremy wrote a library called uh, Superclosure. It is like a box of magic. It turns this function into a string so that it can be deserialized elsewhere, it's pretty cool. Anyway, the idea of this is that we create a process manager, we make a couple tasks when we need to, we add those tasks here, and again, event loop based, we wait until all the processing is done. This won't run forever, it's got a little bit of logic to say, if there are no jobs, wait, no tasks waiting to be done, or busy being done, then this will return false, and the long running script will stop. You can do while true if you really want to. But let's look at this. If we, um, if we print this out and we run index.php, we're not going to see that print. I'll prove it to you. Da, da, da. Uh, doorman. Just going to run till completion. We don't see that print. So how do we know that that's actually happening? Well, if we touch a file and then we run it again, there's a file. That's done by the task in a separate process. This may be difficult to debug, but there's nice helper code to be able to set a path for writing log files. So here you'll see I've got standard error and standard out. And there is the two prints for the two times that I've run the script. We can get feedback in this mechanism. But this allows us to make tasks 
that are non-blocking because it's based on an 